everyone. Welcome to Green Thumb Nursery. So today we're going to be talking about rose care in the fall. So in September, there's certain things that you can do to help your roses get into the fall. And so we're gonna talk about that. So this is what we want them to look like. And hopefully they do. But for most of us, including myself, this time of year, most of our roses are looking like this. Kind of tired, hot, and beat down like us. <laughs> so what we can do to help this baby look like the other baby is we can do a couple things. So I'm going to go over that right now. Um, September is a good time to be doing this. Even though it's kind of hot, you don't necessarily want to get out in the garden, but this is when we want to do this. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a summer prune. And it doesn't, you don't, unless your rose is really bad, if it's diseased and it's just really, really ugly and there's not a lot of leaves left, you can go ahead and cut it back, strip any leaves that are left, like you do at the end of the year, and then let it all reflush. And then as soon as it gets cooler, and hopefully we get some rain, then it'll start coming out. There's some fertilizers we can put on it to stimulate some growth. And then it should rejuvenate for you. So another thing you wanna keep in mind is that roses want a nice deep soaking when you water them. So three to five gallons worth of water when you water. And then allow the top couple inches to dry out like a wrung out sponge in between those waterings. In this weather, it could be anywhere from three to five days that you would do that. If it's in a pot, it can actually dry out a little bit faster in a container because the roots are all in one little area. So you would soak it well and then just make sure you keep an eye on it. The heat causes the petals a lot of times to wither. Just the heat. I mean, it's not something you did. Uh, so if, you're, if your roses are nice and hydrated, then it'll make it a little easier for them to hang on to those petals. So because these are all shot, I'm going to go ahead and prune them. Now, you want to look for the first set of five leaves. There's uh, three, there's a set of three right here. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then the first set of five. But I can see right here that there is a little growth spurt coming up. So I can actually go ahead and just prune this bud right there and be done with that. So you can see there's a little bit of growth right there coming out. This one here, again, I'm gonna to go to the first set of five leaves, and it's also gonna give me a bud that's gonna grow outward. So you want to prune your roses so that they're heading outward, that they'll make a candelabra, keep the open, keep the inside nice and open. This one here is, da is done pretty much. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it on down to where it comes out from the other, the other branch, and I'm just gonna take that whole thing off. Anything that's dead, we can go ahead and take off. And then there is a lot of congestion right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and come out here, even though this is a set of three, at the base of every leaf, there is a potential for uh, sprout. So because this is so congested in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and take it out and I'm gonna, we're making a 45 degree angle cut, if you can, I mean, it, it's still gonna grow, but doing it at an angle kind of helps any kind of water that might wanna settle on the cane to get to, to, to uh, flush off the cane so that you don't get water settling into the cane. Okay, so that opened that up quite nicely in there. So now, again, we're still kinda, it's all congested. This is the time when you're gonna Let's fix, let's fix some problems here. Once it's done flowering, you don't need to worry about it. So we're gonna go ahead, I think with this one, I'm just gonna make it easy and I'm gonna ahead and actually, even though I cut that there, there's a bud right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take it down to there. And that's gonna get rid of even more of the congestion. Now we're almost looking like the end of the year. But that's okay. Now there's a little burn right here, so that's damaged. I'm going to go ahead and take it. There's a little bud right there, so I'm going to take it there. Okay, 
Now here, again, anything that's dead, you want to take off anything that's dead. I think I'm going to be tempted to come down into here again. There's a bud potential right there. And let's see. You know, I think I'm just going to head and take this all the way down. Here's another bud. I'm going to take it down to there. And one more here. So this particular one lent itself to be completely trimmed back. If you've got a fuller rose, it has more branches, a little bit better settle. Uh, this is a younger rose, so it hasn't really been trained that well yet. So now, again, we can start over. So the growth is going to come from here. This one's going to come from there. It's going to come in a little bit, but that's okay. We can deal with that later. This is going to grow there. This is going to grow there. That's going to grow there. So it'll start coming out looking good. So now we got the pruning done. We're going to fertilize it. So what they recommend, the Rosarians recommend, is a shot of iron. So you just follow the directions on this. And then what this does is help lower pH and helps the plant to uptake the nutrient that's already in the soil. Our pH is usually high, eight to nine, because our water is so high, we don't get a lot of rain. We want our pH to be seven or slightly acidic for roses. So the iron is a really good thing, and it also helps with greening. Then we're gonna give it a shot of Epsom salts, which is nothing more than magnesium sulfate. This is a agricultural grade Epsom salts. So you're gonna give a little bit and follow the directions, about a tablespoon in with the soil. And then give it a little shot of Super Thrive. This has got some growth hormone in it, and it's got a little bit of nitrogen, and it's got a lot of fun stuff in there to help give the rose a little boost. So Super Thrive is a good one. This is also good when you're transplanting things. You can use this as well, and that helps with transplant shock. Although, try not to do a whole, whole lot of transplanting this time of year because it's a little hot. If you have to do some transplanting, do it in the evening or early, early morning. So then from there, we're going to alternate between a fish emulsion. This one also has some seaweed in it. And so it, you would add it to, to water and you would uh, water it in. So water your roses first when you're watering any fertilizer, liquid fertilizers, water them first, then water in your product. And then we're going to, two weeks later, after you've done that, we're going to go ahead and give it a balanced rose fertilizer. Well, not balanced, but a, ro a nice rose fertilizer. This one has uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. The nitrogen is four. The phos phosphorus is for the blooms and the roots. So we want it to be a little bit higher in the middle to give it some more blooms and flowers, uh, blooms and roots, and then the overall health of the plant. So one way you can remember that is up, down, all around. Up for the green and growth, down for the roots and flowers, all around for the health of the plant on the last number. So then you'll alternate between these two products. So act, this is gonna be two weeks. So first initial, I would start with this one. Two weeks later, give it some granule. The granule lasts about every six to eight, you do it every six to eight weeks. So, um, I'm sorry, four to six weeks. So a month to a month and a half. In between there and about the middle, or you can wait till the end of the month and a half, hit it again, two weeks later, you could give it another shot. So that'll take us on into the fall. So another thing I like to put on them is azomite. Azomite helps with trace minerals. It's a volcanic product. And I use this on everything, guys. This stuff, is amazing how it greens up the plants. You can see a difference in them. They're really happy when you use this. And this is good for containers as well. So azomite is a really good product to help remineralize the soil. So there's not really, as you can see, there's not, there's not any nitrogen or phosphorus, a little bit of potassium, but we're after the minerals that are in this product. And the minerals help things work a lot better. So this one I would do every six to eight weeks. So then, once these start growing out, during this time of year, we do have a few things that we have to worry about. Well, I wouldn't worry about them, but we do get some insects 
in the garden, unfortunately. When it gets hot, like we are now, we can get chili thrips. And what chili thrips do is they cause the buds to act like they don't want to open and they turn brown and get all weird and the, ro the, f the leaves are all curled and funky. Um, you, can use, you can bring us a sample and we can very easily diagnose it for you, but it usually happens when it's hot. We had some uh, just after the spring and the summer this year and then it got cool again and we kind of they kind of went away but for that i like to use the oil spray this is an all season oil and this will also work for your powdery mildew and it does any type of sucking type insects whether it be um, aphids uh, spider mites mealybugs um, scales don't so much get the mealybugs on roses, thank goodness, that doesn't seem to be one of them, but you surely get aphids, you surely get uh, spider mites and scales. Scales are like little, little shells that are stuck to the side of the plant. Fortunately, this one's nice and clean, so I can't give you an example, but this one you would spray once a week as you're having the issue. If uh, it, once it goes away, you don't need to spray it, but it also makes the leaves nice and shiny. The other thing we get is um, budworms or uh, bristly rose slugs. The bristly rose slugs are the larva of a fly and they lay their eggs on there and then the next thing you know you start seeing like skeleton, your leaves look like skeletons. The veins are there, the insides of the leaves are gone. That's a bristly rose slug. It happens at a certain times of the year. I'm not seeing it right now so much, so that's kind of good. But, but this will work for that. This is called Spinosad. Well, it's called Monterey Insect Spray, but it has the active ingredient is Spinosad. And it is a bacteria that will disrupt the digestive system of the worms. So I like to say if it's a chewing type insect, except for slugs and snails, this is gonna take care of that. Um, slugs and snails, you would just use like a snail bait. Um, and they do get on there and the way you're going to know it's the, what, which one's the slug and snail is you'll see like somebody blew their nose on your plant, like slimy scale looking stuff or snotty looking stuff. That's their trail. So if you see that, you got slugs or snails or you might even see them on there. If you don't see that, then you would use this product here if you're getting holes in your leaves or in your buds. The bud worms will actually chew holes in your buds. So they go to open up and they're like the top of it's all chewed off. Um, but this will work very well for that. So, one application, 10 days later, a second application, and that should give you about a month's worth of protection. So the last thing now that you've taken care of any insects is I like to top dress with the Malibu compost. And when I say top dress, that just means you're gonna put a thin layer of Malibu compost around the base of the rows. If most people should have like a little water well that you kind of have for them there, where you've mounted up some soil to make like a little well. And I like to put that in the well. Now be careful not to put it right up against the trunk of the plant. Pull it back a little bit. And it's just a very thin layer. And what this does is it's gonna jumpstart all these fertilizers and things that you've stuck in the ground. It's gonna jumpstart those microorganisms and those microorganisms are what break down the fertilizers and make it available to the plants. So it's just gonna get everything all nice and jumpstarted. So within probably a week to two weeks, these are gonna start sprouting right off the bat. So don't panic. Now sometimes when you trim them back like this and it's really sunny, you may have to put a little shade cloth over it until it starts getting some leaves on it because it can burn the trunk. The sun can burn the trunk. So be careful with that if you do this extreme. If you just doing and there's still leaves on it and you just trimmed it back, then you should be fine not have to worry about sunburn on the trunks. So that is about it in a nutshell. So this is one thing you can do to rejuvenate your roses so you get a nice fall bloom in October, November, even into December. Thank you and have a great day.